Well, you know what? We're going to be going for broke in this match. Because the GM is not being super soft. At least from what I can tell. Please welcome on in our first GM for the day. Tempestral. Tempestral. Hello there. Hey, how's it going? Oh, going great. How are you? Doing all right. It's my birthday today. <gasps> Happy birthday. Oh my gosh. It's your birthday, everybody. It is. Ever throw your hands in the air and pretend that yeah, you're giving kick away because we got a birthday. That's why I'm here two weeks in a row, even though I typically uh, try and only take bi-weekly matches. Oh, I honestly, I don't care. Take as many as you want, and it's great to have a birthday. So wait, did you choose this game specifically for your birthday? Yes. Aww. Yes. So I, I discovered this very recently, and I thought, you know what? Uh, this is a game that is based on a game I am intimately familiar with. It would be really great to show off. Well, actually, we have a sort of a special thing today. I, I guess I might as well introduce what the game is. Sure. Go for it. So uh, a little while ago, uh, I was hanging out with some friends in VR, and and one of the, you know one of them was talking about oh you know these new Metal Slug games got introduced or got announced. I used to love playing Metal Slug back on my Game Boy, and I I swear to God, I, maybe I'm mis misremembering this, but I swear he said on my Game Boy Color, and that's not the that's not possible because you know um, SNK <laughs> had the Neo Geo Pocket, yeah, and I know because I speed run Metal Slug First Mission, so I'm I'm pretty familiar with this game. Uh, and I looked it up, and then I found that there is, in fact, a Metal Slug on the Game Boy Color, and it's called Metal Slug 2001 or Battle of Vietnam 2001. <laughs> and there's actually three games in this series, and there are four by this developer, and they're all different. Aren't they so, very bootleg? Oh, they're so bootleg. This is my syntax. Oh, so, yeah, um, I love me a good syntax game. So we've had a we've had a a um, Game Boy Color uh, Metal Slug bootleg on the Cuso Grande before. I can't remember what the name was, but it was a um, it was also by Syntax, but it wasn't the original engine was not developed by them. It was developed by oh, what's the name of the folks who made it? The folks who made Zoo no Hero, idea. which is actually a good bootleg game made based off what? of Mega Man. Zook Hero, Z O O K Hero. That. Yeah, yeah, I I know because I've recommended it to Xandra several times <laughs> because it's it's unironically like a pretty good game. Did Xandra actually uh, and play it? I don't know. I don't know if uh, if she has yet. Xandra. Um, the the thing with Zook Hero is that it's a bootleg of Mega Man Extreme, and Mega Man Extreme is actually a pretty good game. So I mean, there's no way that it's not gonna be at least okay. No, so Zook. No, no, Zook is not Syntax. I'm aware of that. Zook, Zook Hero is not by Syntax. However, Syntax released a Metal Slug Game Boy Color bootleg, which used the Zook Hero engine. And I don't think the creators of the Zook Hero engine, whose name I'm forgetting now, um, I don't think that they have, uh, that I don't, I don't know if they were okay with that or if that was also stolen code. Um, so I count that one as sort of separate because it's not part of the lineage of the games that I am showing you today. We have two games today. The uh, both of which yeah. were developed completely in house, to the best of my knowledge. Obviously, aside from the stolen assets, um, so there are three Metal Slug Game Boy Color games that are original to Syntax. Uh, Metal uh, Battle of Vietnam 2001. This is not official box art. Uh, this this game doesn't have official box art. It's a bootleg. Uh, uh, this well, one I is the first one. Some bootlegs do. But... Fair. This one doesn't, to the best of my knowledge. All right, all right. We'll we'll, we'll let you have that. So there's this one. Uh, this this one steals a lot of assets from Metal Slug First Mission and Second Mission, and I figured since I'm intimately familiar with the inner workings of Metal Slug First Mission, at least, uh, it would be really funny to show off this game that plays nothing like it. Um, <laughs> the second game in the series has absolutely no relation to this one. Uh, it is only sort of second because they ha it was also Metal Slug and they wanted to release a two. It's called, in English, it's called Terrifying 9-11, and it features, <laughs> a, no. I kid you not, a digitized digitized uh, a photo of 9-11 in progress and photos of, of uh, like, imagery of Osama bin Laden <sighs> and George W. Bush. Oh my gosh, you as cannot... As part of the story. 
so we're not so we're not showing that because that's a little like this was made in 2002 by the way like you know we can joke about oh too soon but no unironically too soon for <laughs> at the time that that came out wow so distasteful so wow. so we're not we're not showing it off and you know what's the worst part well maybe that's actually the worst part of it but what is also bad about it is that the actual gameplay is is a really technically impressive uh, Game Boy Color port of Metal Slug 1 for the arcade. If it weren't for that, if it, if it weren't for the the really distasteful story times, it would actually be a really impressive Game Boy, well, it is a really impressive Game Boy Color port, but it would be something that we could show off, <laughs> but we can't. <laughs> yeah, now remind me it's the like, name. It's called Terrifying 9-11. Uh, oh, it's really Justin. bad. Justin. Everything else, like, yeah, the gameplay is, is, is uh, really we, good. Everything else about it is terrible. I'm just trying to let Justin know that there is a bootleg Game Boy Color game called Terrifying 9-11. It's, oh, it's super He's blinking. He's, like, a little bit in shock. It came out right yeah. after. Is it, is it a, is this a real game or a ROM hack? It's a bootleg. It's a real game question mark? <laughs> um, but it, it steals a lot. The third game in the series, which is the other one that we're going to be showing, we're doing a, a two-game relay, the first and third. The third game in the series is, at least the ROM I have, is called Metal Slug Vietnam Battle 3, and it kind of resembles the first game, but in different ways. Both of these games are kind of short. Uh, a really good player could probably beat it in 40 minutes, but if these p players don't beat even the first game in an hour, you know, that's totally fine. Um... Yeah, I believe we have audio. All of the players are streaming and, well, we did have one person who unfortunately wasn't able to make it due to, uh, due to safety issues, considering that uh, people are being asked to conserve energy in certain locations. I completely understand. It is a little bit of a heat wave over here in the US for those who aren't here. Uh, yeah, it's fun stuff. But here are our three players for this match. Chaos42666, Gambit017, and Just Monotone. Go ahead and start that prediction. And yeah, we are doing the two games. Starting with... What are we starting with? We're starting with Battle of Vietnam 2001. Uh, and I... I basically told the players you'll know when this game is beaten if you beat this game move on to the second game immediately uh i gave them the controls for both games they're very similar Aww, I, yeah. I actually was really confused by the whole battle of vietnam thing because i looked that up because there were multiple games in this bootleg list that came uh, specifically these are taiwanese and i was like is is the chinese name for Metal Slug Battle of Vietnam, because I found other websites that referenced Battle of Vietnam, and I think the likely answer is probably no. Everybody spam all of your gun sure. and action emotes, explosions, because as soon as I see movement in the first stage, I will start our timer. Yeah, bring those emotes in. Yeah, this isn't terrifying 9-11, okay. so it's a little no, more okay. No, 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 we won't ah. show that. So, um, so, like I said, this game borrows a lot from Metal Slug first and second mission on the Neo Geo Pocket Color, but this is a uh, Game Boy Color game. Ooh. So, it, you, first thing you might notice is that it runs like garbage. It might be a little hard to tell, but when you're playing, it stutters constantly. Like, there's not smooth scrolling when you move left and right. Okay. Um, it's, it's really, it, it almost feels like the game is lagging on every other frame. It's really bad. Um... There's also this weird delay when you jump where your character slows down. You have to, like, accelerate to when you walk. The game is very fluid when you turn around for some reason. I don't know why. The yeah, game, like, runs at double when speed you when jump. you do that. When you jump, you get this huge momentum boost. So here's the speed tech for this game. Here's how you go fast, and the players will need to know this. Walk forward and then jump. That's the speed tech. We're done. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Honestly, the more time you're in the air, the better. Typically, unless you get hit, in which case uh, you're kind of vulnerable. Um, but yeah, you generally want to be jumping a lot. The only the only downside, of course, is that it's kind of hard to control your momentum in the air. So uh, if you don't know where your platforms are, and this game has a lot of blind jumps, uh, you can end up sort of putting yourself in danger. Um, another fun thing about this game 
is that uh, so unlike unlike metal slug typically uh there are no grenades there's there also are weapon upgrades but they take the form of like basically contra style pellet additions so like there's a spread shot and in this game i'm pretty sure that's the only weapon upgrade they don't give you like the ro rocket lounge chair or the you know heavy machine gun or anything like that they just give you a spread shot yeah and as far as i can tell it does the exact same amount of damage i, I don't actually think it does anything different uh, there are no knifing attacks, so not only do you not have a close range option, but you have no way of instantly killing infantry. So infantry that take multiple hits to kill with a gun cannot be uh, taken out uh, instantly by a knife attack. Gotcha. That also means that you don't have any way of, inv of killing enemies up close uh, with invincibility. So, like this blue guy up here on, uh, on Gambit's screen. Yeah, if this was Metal Slug First Mission, you could just jump up and knife him, but you can't, you have to stop and actually shoot him twice if you want to get rid of him without taking damage. Honestly, it seems like the more you know about Metal Slug, the harder this game is going to be. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. I love when there are bootlegs that do that, that uh, actually are detrimental to people who know them. Are the layouts uh, relatively similar, like the layouts of the levels and such? Uh, I don't know Metal Slug Second Mission really at all. Okay. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, no, it's nothing like uh, even Second Mission. It has very little to do with First Mission. Uh, this sewer level that everyone's on is uh, it resembles um, First Mission's uh, sewer level, level four, very closely, but it's way, way larger. Um, okay. So it's way larger and way more vertical. Uh, <laughs> and there are jumps, you, there are areas where you'll fall down and you can't get back up again because the jump doesn't go high enough. Uh, and you'll, you'll also probably notice, start to notice in this level especially, the awful hitboxes. Um, so this, this is a level that has you primarily going down and your character never really goes higher than half screen. Uh, typically they're, you know, two thirds of the way down the screen. Uh, the camera has not been adjusted to account for that fact. Yeah. Now, uh, I, I do else? want people to know that uh, approaching bootlegs in a blind race, uh, it, it's a little bit different from what you would normally expect uh, when you are having a blind race, because uh, most games that come out, you know, have some sort of quality control uh, in that, you know, yeah. if you get stuck somewhere, there's usually a way to get out. Uh, if there is some dumb mechanic that gets introduced. Usually it'll give some sort of visual indication. Bootlegs can break all of the rules that you would normally have when it comes to blind racing. So uh, you can expect soft locks. You can expect mm -hmm. the game to just like have jumps that are actually literally impossible unless or crashes. you do it or crashes. Uh, you can have jumps that you actually have to use in-game glitches to get through, uh, even though they are, like... <sighs> and the game's just built that way, that it takes advantage of its own glitches sometimes. And, yeah, well, so we're yep. going to have to see what happens with oh. this game if there's... <laughs> oh, no, Gambit, no! <laughs> yes! Yes! Okay, so, g look at Gambit's screen. Gambit just tried to pick up that, uh that that um help like that uh, that spread shot right at the beginning of the stage you can't it's out of bounds um Why? so also the hitbox on this moving platform is awful damn it's right at the edge right there uh there's, there's so many things that i haven't even mentioned and i've already mentioned a bunch of awful things about okay. this, this game. so you can't walk on the sloped floor but you no, can no, on you the can. flat it's floor a, nope so oh, Chaos blind just jumps. The same thing. Oh no. God. Both the hitboxes for those platforms are massively offset to oh. the left. They they might as well be a full platform's width off to the left. Um Okay, what else? What were the other things? Oh, so somebody uh, pointed out in chat that uh yeah, when you shoot you hover in the air for a second, and you can actually hang in the air for quite a while if you mash the shoot button. Um It's it does actually help in bosses, I find, I think. It's kind of hard to tell when you're doing damage to an enemy. I can't tell if they take damage while they're flashing. Like, th I'm just going to assume that it's possible because it's a bootleg. Um, you also notice that when you shoot multiple shots, uh, you <laughs> um, you can't have more than one bullet on the screen at a time. Or Well, you can have more than one bullet because you can have the, the spread shot, but like you can't have more, more than one active shot on screen. Yeah. So what happens is it just deletes your bullet. 
if you if you <laughs> no. try and fire more than once on uh, while another shot is on screen, it just deletes your existing bullet. And so it effectively means that if you want to fire quickly, your gun gets melee range. Okay. Metal sludge. Yeah. <laughs> Metal sludge. Now, there are infinite lives and infinite continues. So we don't have to worry too much. This game is quite forgiving. And that's part of what makes it really easy. I think if it didn't have that, then maybe this would be harder. Yeah, you might be right. You know, I'm, I'm looking at uh, Syntax and some of the games that they made, and... Uh, oh my gosh, they're so good. Uh, they are actually... The players here are actually playing a fan translation of the bootlegs. Yes. Uh, yes, they are. Yeah, specifically, this fan translation came out in 2004. A few... Or no, uh, 2016 is when they released it. The game... This bootleg mm -hmm. came out in 2004, so... Oh, no, Gambit, no! Okay, this game is officially rude. It... Uh, it's, it's pretty awful. Oh, my gosh. I love how big the platform hitboxes are. They're so good. Oh, well, the, the like, the moving platform hitbox? Yes. Oh, it's, it's, it's only... It's not that big. It's actually the size of the platform, but it's offset almost a full platform width to the left. Oh, I guess it is big. I guess maybe it's two platform widths. But, like, you can stand... Yeah, you can stand all the way on the left, and that goes up and down. It's not, like, mirrored on the other side. I, the hitbox is functionally non-existent on the right side, and it doesn't even cover the entire platform. I love it. What about when the platform is mirrored? Uh, because I think we... it has the same behavior. Oh, okay. I think, I think, like, the hitbox is actually in the same direction. It, the hitbox doesn't get mirrored. Monotone has progressed the next level with Chaos right behind. I, I'm actually kind of really interested in seeing how progress is made in this game because it's really easy to move fast by jumping and the game's not that hard and it's really forgiving so like i'm sort of interested in seeing how um how neck and neck this is going to end up being basically who can who can get the hang of the the whack-ass jumps <laughs> and, and 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 who can um figure out how to like position yourself effectively to shoot things it's your birthday it's really i'll allow play. it Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's, uh... I just gave you allowance, okay? It's your birthday. All right. It's, uh, it's, it's also, it's one thing you can do is you can shoot bullets. Um, so, like, and you, you are going to need to shoot bullets. I found that it was necessary for some of the bosses. Um, there's still more jank in this game, by the way. I haven't even gone through it all. When we get to the first boss, uh, it gets incredibly janky. So here's my um, question. Uh, there are continues w from what we just saw. Are there infinite yeah. continues? Yeah, there are. It, you you never have to go back a level um, if you die in this game. That's it, really nice. Infinite continues. Honestly, uh, yeah, that's and... something that uh, bootlegs, they either have infinite continues or, like, no continues, and it's very rare that it's anywhere in between, so... Uh, thank That's goodness. That's true. Yeah, and and this one is fortunately pretty, pretty forgiving. I, I think that's part of what contributes to its easiness. Like, uh, it, it might not be the most intuitive to play, but it definitely isn't punishing. Right? Yeah. You die. Okay, we'll go back to the start of the level. Every level is only like five minutes long, if that. So. Discovered enemy activity. Oh no! It's a tank. Okay, so this boss um, is really stupid. Uh, I'm curious if you will notice what the jank is. It depends on how... Oh, no. Uh, so, I don't know. Monotone is under the assumption that if the uh, boss is flashing, then they can't be damaged. And I think that's not the case. I think the boss can be damaged while they're flashing, but I'm not sure. Is the flashing just to show that you got a hit? I think so. I don't think it's actually iframes, but I, it's really hard to tell. Like, I, I haven't gone in. With, with first mission, because I routed the speedrun for it, I went in and, you know, used BizHawk to view memory and all that. Um, so I know how much health every boss has and how much damage all the weapons do. By the but, way, I noticed something on Gambit's you know. screen. There was a platform yes. moving up and down over spikes. Turns out the platform will go just barely low enough so yes. that you will touch the spikes and, in, in, you know essentially die so yes. thank you so much for having the platform just maybe a pixel or two too low bootleg developers <laughs> much appreciated it's a real jerk move isn't it oh i love it <laughs> it is it's a jerk move so okay oh man we're on the boss and it's okay so people aren't shooting continuously i 
I shot continuously and it, it led to some really funny jank and I don't know if the players are going to experience this. So, okay. Um, Chaos is trying to shoot con continuously a little bit. Oh, okay. Oh, and got the front panel off. Nice, nice. Okay. Okay. There's a few things that make this boss hard. First, uh, your walk speed on the ground is really slow to start off with, which means that once, by the time you figured out what the trajectory of each bomb is going to be, it's kind of hard to move out of the way. The bomb hit boxes True. are really, really large. Um, the other thing is that when you, when you, when you're, uh, how do I put this? When your, your bullet intersects with the explosion sprite, the explosion sprite gets dragged <gasps> towards the gun. I see that happening and it with slows just down. Yeah, 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 right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and here's the thing. Those explosions, the damage hurt box comes with them. You can hurt yourself doing that. See how it's see how it's staying around his head? Yes. That's oh, yes. Oh, perfect. I'm so and glad you got to see that. Chaos is doing it too. Yeah, look that at it. That is the most baffling piece of piece of jank in this entire game. I have no idea what you would have to mess up in your code to make that happen. <laughs> that is amazing. And like, it seems inconsistent to me too. Like sometimes the, the explosion hitbox will come with it and hurt you and sometimes it doesn't. And I don't know if it's because there's like, if it lasts a different amount of time. Gambit anyway. has opted to just hide uh, inside the tank. That to is the fight correct it. strat in my opinion. Um, I, I think uh, Monotone may be under the the impression that uh, walking underneath the tank damages you, which is not unfair. I mean, it's a giant boss sprite. Yeah. Um, but you can walk underneath that tank, and in fact, you can jump up onto the Gardo on its tread. This is this is a weird Game Boy Color Metal Slug knockoff, one of four, of which we are going to show two today. Yeah. Essentially, I, at, this, at the rate these folks are getting through this, too. I love it. Uh so yeah, for this boss, you need to destroy all components of the tank, including that little hovering drone that fires down at you. It's probably the most annoying part of this thing um, because it it fires at a spacing where you can't stand between its shots. You have to stand directly underneath one of them and then shoot upwards to destroy the bullets it pushes down at you. I found that the easiest. Do 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 I... Like, at least the music's pretty good, but if the music's stolen, no. then... Yeah, I don't. I think it might be from something else. I can't remember. Uh, I did not spoil the next game. I'm. This is a doubleheader. I'm giving uh, two games, two Metal Slug knockoffs by syntax to these players. So if slash when, I expect when these players uh, beat this game, they're going to play the next one. Yeah. I have, I have no idea what the next game is going to be. It hasn't even been revealed in the game. Master's Champ, yes, so... Oh no! Uh, yeah, I have no idea. Uh, so, was this Sachin or Syntax that made this specifically? Sachin. Uh, that name is familiar. I don't. It, this is Syntax. Uh, specifically, this is by BBD, which is a. Ah, the music is stolen from the Great Battle Pocket. Thank you. Yeah, Codeman was doing some research on this as well earlier. Codeman, you're um, cool. Yeah, I found this this uh, delightful. All the information I know about this came from this delightful website uh, that features a lot of bootlegs that I don't know if I want to say the name of because people will go look at it. I mean, there is, is the, the, the bootlegs or the bootleg games wiki, which I'm and this game has through. a very very minimal paragraph on this game. I found another someone's personal blog talking about bootleg games. Um, where they went into more depth about this and other syntax releases. <laughs> Someone who collects bootlegs. Yeah, I, w I was going to say, if I did find stuff about this on the bootleg wiki, uh, it was barely any information at all, which is great, you know? Mm. Uh, the thing is, there are so many bootleg games out there that are just, like, auto-scrollers or uh, things that are just repetitive crap that we've seen a million times. Getting a platformer uh, for a bootleg is almost always exciting because they're all, oh my gosh, they're all terrible. One of these days, we're going to oh, have yeah. some of the Earthworm Jim bootlegs, I swear. Uh, I love those. They're unplayable and they're they're amazing. And uh, I actually have a handheld console here released by Data East that has an Earthworm Jim bootleg on it. <laughs> 
I, I honestly, I tried playing Earthworm Jim 1, and I, I disliked it so much that I'm not sure bootleg would make it any worse for me. Oh, I found yeah. It, I found it distinctly unplayable. Wow, that is... That's saying a lot. Uh, there you Earthworm go. See, Jim someone else. Is Earthworm Jim is barely playable itself. Correct opinion. Correct I, opinion spotted. I would say that the second game is a lot Sorry. easier than the first, so... If for some reason the first gives you a lot of trouble and you've never played the second, give the second a shot. It's a lot of fun. It, it looked really pretty. It sounded like a SNES game. Uh, I, I just found, I don't know what it was about the game that I found unplayable, but it was like, I couldn't figure out how to actually interact with the environment. Like it, it felt like I wasn't being told something about the game's fundamental rules. I, I know? sort of agree with that. Like, honestly, uh, there was a certain standard, uh, a certain design that came with platformers of the time. And Earthworm Jim broke a lot of those, uh, which sort of made it its own genre of video game. I don't know. It, it's weird. Truly the Dark Souls of the SNES era. No, no. Well, <laughs> no. Uh, sorry. No, I should go back and revisit it sometimes. Uh, at least the second game. I having the manual on hand would probably help a lot. Yeah, <laughs> you know? I'd probably agree with you. Uh, I, I didn't get out of the first level because I kept dying to that stupid dog thing that was in there. And I, I was just like, you know what? I, there are other games I could be playing right now. And then I played those. <laughs> so well, it's it's very much a me thing and not a- Okay, a, you know, I, I know that like dog thing. If you get past the first level in Earthworm Jim 1, then it's kind of, not easy street, but it's a lot more enjoyable. Right. Is what I would say. Just look up how to get through the first level, Tempestrol, okay? And then you can have fun with Earthworm Jim. Right. I promise. Th there was some it was something where like I couldn't I could tell that I needed to get like down into the pit and then out of it again, but I couldn't it was it, as far as I could tell, physically impossible to get out of the pit fast enough or before the dog got to me. And I don't remember it, this was a couple of years ago and I just haven't revisited it since because I don't own the game. Um the I bar that I was lake. playing it at closed. Oh no! Oh no! Tempest Troll. Yeah. Uh, I, I talked about it before. I'm still that sad. That is so <laughs> sad. Uh, I'm I'm glad that places are starting to starting to open up again. Even yeah. if you know, uh, I do still think, especially anybody who's not vaccinated, take plenty of precautions. You know. Uh, and you don't have to be going outside every day. We don't know exactly what's going to happen with uh, variants that uh, come You're not out. Vaccinated. Get your vaccines, please. But one benefit of going outside when you're vaccinated is that it puts pressure on those who aren't vaccinated to actually do it. Uh, m oh my gosh, my dad was visiting this last weekend because they oh, yeah. they had a funeral, or they were they were here up through. Uh, Friday. Yeah, they, they went to a funeral and my dad has a little facial hair and I'm like, it's been a good decade or two since you've had any facial hair. He's like, yeah, oh. well, my work has a policy that uh, if you are vaccinated, you don't necessarily have to wear a mask. You can have facial hair uh, underneath the mask. And my dad, or and they're like, if you're not vaccinated, you can't have facial hair. So my dad's growing facial hair just to rub it in the faces of uh, the employees there. <laughs> That's an interesting because tactic. I want to point out, by the way, that Chaos has made it past the first boss. Yeah, very nice, Chaos. Yeah, I, well, simply put, a lot of people, there are some people there who might be pressured into getting a vaccine so that they can grow a little bit of a mustache. I thought Mormons were all, like, clean-shaven. Uh, I mean, isn't that a thing? Am I am yeah, I mistaken yeah, in that? Yeah, it, it is a thing. Although it's technically not a rule, it, it it's one of those uh, like not written. There are, rules. there are a lot of things that are technically not rules that the modern church has introduced. Let's not get into that. <laughs> I just realized I should maybe shut my mouth. <laughs> oh no no no! I I completely agree. Like my dad used to have a mustache, but uh, yeah, they wanted everybody to basically look the same. So White facial hair, pretty much gone. White mustache. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Everybody wear... You know, if, it, if it works, it works, right? Yeah. I, I don't know if it's going to work, but uh, it's really funny to me. I, I completely mm. agree with uh, Spite Mustache just to rub it in other people's faces, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I totally get it. 
Okay, yeah, Chaos is definitely in the lead at this point. Both Gambit very, very and Just so. Monotone are working on yeah. this first boss. Uh, and, and I'm really yeah. not sure which of them is ahead of the other. I, I suspect that, you know, one of them will be it eventually, but I'm really not sure which of them is is ahead here. I bet both of them will beat it eventually, to be fair. <laughs> Monotone is doing exactly what I did, which is to jump inside and get rid of the cannon first. And, and in that exact position, you can see Monotone's bullets are colliding with the bullets being shot downwards. Oh, wow. Nice, nice. And he found a location where the, the bomb that drops directly downward doesn't hit you. Although, unfortunately, when you destroy the cannon, you do end up getting hit by the uh, explosion. It is a Metal Slug bootleg. It is a bootleg of first and second mission for the Neo Geo Pocket Color. A really good system. Yeah, this is not Metal Slug. It kind of is Metal Slug, but it's not Metal Slug. It's Battle of Vietnam 2001. You've never heard of this game? The Battle of Vietnam series is so well loved. Well, yeah, less Metal Slug, more Plastic Punch. Plastic Punch? Yeah. That are, I'm looking at it. Is that a real game? No, no, no! Come on! I'm just, I'm just replacing metal with plastic and slug with punch. Oh yeah, it is. A, yeah. yeah, it is a synonym for, for punch, isn't it? Huh? Plastic yeah, slap. slug bugs. You know slug bugs? Okay. Uh, so in the U.S., we have a proud tradition of punching people whenever you see a Volkswagen Beetle, uh, and it's a proud That's tradition. Funny, yeah. Okay. Basically, everybody. Like, whenever a beetle appears, there is a chance you're going to get punched. And it's just yes, acceptable. No That's how we live in the U.S. Constant fear. And, and, <laughs> and you say no punchbacks, of course, right? Uh, well, it, it's implied in the rule. Oh, it, or it's, it's implied in the game, you know? First person to see... Uh, a slug bug is what they call no them here. No punchbacks of cowardice. I knew you, we were going to have one of those yeah. people. But the punch has to be in the shoulder, okay? Or the, the yeah. upper arm, you know? You don't punch somebody in the face. You just punch their upper arm. And then if they ask you, why did you punch me? Which they inevitably will. They'll point and say slug bug. Because there's a slug bug right okay. there. Interesting. Up, so uh, up here, uh, the phrase that I learned was punch buggy. Punch buggy. Yeah, punch buggy. No punch bags. And uh, we call the punch buggy. Yeah, I had made saying punch buggy as well. So maybe maybe that's like a northern U.S. and Canada thing. Oh, that's adorable. Oh, so cute. I love Canada now. He spans the continent. All right. Uh, did oh, Okay, people people of chat and Rosentia, how about yellow car? Was yellow car a thing? Did you people do this for yellow cars? Because when I was a kid, what? we did it for yellow cars also. Uh, yeah. We started doing it for PT Cruisers. You'd oh. give a cruiser I mean, you cruiser. Punch the, the owner. Yeah, you should, you should punch you should the owner. Punch not the your owner of the PT Look, Cruiser. If you have a PT Cruiser, I'm sorry, but I have like a real concern for your sense of visual taste. We, yeah, someone else is saying for yellow cars. Yeah, it's not just me. Okay, what, I feel what validated. Would, what What is the phrase for yellow cars? Did you have a phrase? Yeah, it was yellow car. That's Look, we it? aren't imaginative kids, okay? That's a that's Punch dumb. From Lilo okay, they did do that in Lilo and Stitch. Uh, Maybe that's where I heard it. Yeah, the thing, like we had to rhyme, otherwise we couldn't punch each other. So, slug bug, cruiser, oh, bruiser. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it's those two. Cruiser Bruiser is pretty good. I like that one a lot. Actually. Oh yeah, I might start using that when I can go outside and interact with my friends. Uh, <laughs> but, we haven't been talking about the match, but Chaos is close to the end. Uh, believe it or not, this is a boss. Uh, and so these two flying dudes are going to take a million billion hits, just like this tank. Oh. So Chaos is super in the lead. People are asking if we had Pididdle. I, I think we called it Paradiddle yeah. here, but I'm not completely sure. Uh, essentially, I... when one car had a headlight out, you could punch people. <laughs> yeah, I learned about Pididdle through a... Um, through a uh, through a book, it wasn't a thing that I learned about organically, and nobody I knew when I I told my friends about it, they were like, "I've never heard of that." Actually, so I don't. I, maybe it's an older thing. I don't know. Paradiddle is a drum technique. That's why it was coming up to. 
up into my mind. Okay. Diddle punch. It, it could be called a few different things, but yeah, I, I, I love that we violence. like have rule like acceptable rules for violence here in the US. But then again, you know, we tend compared to other cultures, we tend to be a little bit more accepting of certain kinds of violence, you know, especially with Obsidian. media. You don't go to Japan and expect people to punch you. They do Not that, typically. you call the police. Yeah, here, you're like, aha, you saw a car, didn't you? <laughs> there, yeah, ironically, no vehicle punching in this game yet. There is, in fact, no such thing as punching in this game. Ooh, ooh, Chaos has gotten himself clipped into the floor. Okay, is that good? You, you I, no, I don't know. You can clip into the floor on this boss. That's how I beat it. Oh, okay. uh, it doesn't help you. It just sort of... It just sort of clips you into the floor. I don't know why. It's it's really weird. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can still move. Yeah, you can still move. I think you can still jump. It's just for whatever reason, like, you start up on top of this boat. You can't get back up onto it. If you get, like, hit, it knocks you down. I don't, I don't know why. Oh, my gosh. Just Monotone may be able to beat this boss. There we go. Yep. Just Monotone Very is through. Nice. Gambit, I believe, now... got here first, but yep. has taken the longest. Uh, I believe so, yeah. The places have really moved back and forth quite a bit. And you know what? We, we're not even halfway through this match yet. We still have uh, quite a while to go. So, the, the you know, if Gambit gets through this boss relatively quickly, you know, there's still a real chance that uh, he can make it back. Well, yeah. I mean, bootlegs tend to have easy sections followed by brick walls that you just have to figure out how to get through. And uh, yep. this specific brick wall has been very difficult for Gambit. Uh, we'll have to see if he's able to develop a way to get through this. Uh, yeah, and for what it's worth, I struggled with this boss quite a lot. I actually had to, like, give up and come back to the game uh, to beat this to beat this boss the first time I did, because I just couldn't avoid getting hit. Yeah, Gambit is doing an interesting strat. If you stand in this exact location and jump at the right times, you can get shots off without taking any damage. Uh, however, like it. it still has taken a long time. Yeah, and so you have to jump all the way to full height. Looks like Gambit knows that you can hold the jump button to just barely rise a little bit higher than tapping. And uh, yeah, you get this like sort of float, this sort of floaty jump if you hold the button long enough. And that gives you just enough height to hit the turret, but it takes so many hits. Yeah, usually uh, uh, if something is taking a long time, I recommend that people try something new. Uh, though Gambit has tried a whole lot of different techniques, and this is working out yep. the best so far. So it is just if Gambit can manage to kill that gun at the top, I think uh, he may be able to finish this boss. But it It'll is a, a pain here. in the butt. It is. It is. And and uh, Chaos is now actually on the final boss. Oh, no, sorry, not the final boss, the second to final boss. Ah. Um, this this boss is actually really easy. Your bullets, the, the the chopper's bullets have a really large hitbox, which you think would be bad, except that you can fire straight up and destroy them. So it's actually really generous on, on the collision. Oh, very nice. Uh, yeah, the strange thing with this is that, are you flying? It looks like you're in the air. Yeah, we're, I don't know where, where you are. No idea. So one thing that Gambit should probably be doing, by the way, is that when you are on the ground in between shots, you could get a shot into the front of the tank as well. Like you have a yeah. lot of stuff that you need to kill. So just waiting for the cannon to launch bullets before you shoot. I don't I don't know. There's a lot of time being wasted. And the more and, and that this tank shoots, the more likely you're going to take damage. Yeah, and, and and also, um, I don't remember what I was going to say. Anyways, you're yeah, you're right. Oh oh, uh, about like you know, we so we we we, we frequently tell people you know, uh, if going slow is you know, slow and steady is is often a good strategy, but there are cases where you do need to pick up the pace, um, and this is simply one of them. You know, trying to be as efficient as possible is really crucial here. Yep. When going slow is more dangerous than going fast, you want to go fast. Oh. Oh, Chaos just died on the side of that turret. 
which has a hitbox far, far larger than what it looks like. That that, that turret's hitbox uh, extends off the side of the platform it's on. <laughs> that's off, off the left seat right there. Yeah, off the I left saw. side of the platform. Gigantic that's, hitbox. That's like a whole sprite. Uh, yeah. Width. That's it's, amazing. It's yeah. No so, idea why it's that big. Just so everybody knows, by the way, Chaos is currently in the lead, having beaten the second boss. Uh, just Monotone is working his way over to that boss as well. The second to last boss at the very least. Gambit, meanwhile, is currently yeah. in third. Now, question, how many points do the players have for this match uh, before uh, I believe getting here? Point. This is what now? I believe this is two point. These are all players who got fourth in the last uh, round, I believe. Uh, I, I need to go and double check on the sheet, but I think... Yeah, I, I'm showing that as well. So one player in this match will be eliminated. Crappy's also going to get eliminated. Sorry, fella. <laughs> one player? <laughs> yeah, one Three player and Crappy. Now, because uh, they have to have a total of nine points, whoever comes in second will get seven points for this match, two for the first, totaling nine, meaning that they stay oh, okay. in for another round. I guess I was mistaken on the uh, point. I thought it was I thought it was ten required to make it to the third round. <laughs> Hedge Maze is correcting me, saying they probably already they're probably already home. <laughs> Whatever. They Look, can go <laughs> I've watched too many reality TV shows. Okay, they always say, yeah, they're gonna have to go home. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, face the music. Right. Okay, Chaos. can you like the first boss? Remember how good the first boss was? Are you serious? Are you serious? <laughs> this uh... is not. <laughs> Funny. Gambit's gonna be so mad if Gambit gets past this and then to this boss again. It's it's by the way, it's not any like easier when you get to it the second time. You just now have a strategy for beating it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, if you use the mad. strategy that you had before, this is dumb. Oh, it's awful. I forgot about that. I I, I guess I was mistaken. I, I thought for whatever reason that the chopper was the second last boss. Boss rush or a reused boss? No, nah, it's a reused boss. I mean, it can be both. I um, mean, boss rush bosses are often reused bosses. Oh my gosh, Gambit has killed the front part of the tank. Good, good. You can actually good. just go stand under the gun and shoot straight up. I Although, think, yeah, and I think he knows that you can stand in there. I think he was earlier, but um, <laughs> it isn't the, now, and I'm not sure why. It's a lot easier to hit. Question you for you. Do your jump. bullets despawn if you shoot too fast? Yes. Yeah, I mentioned this earlier. If you it, you can only have one active shot on screen. Um, oh my so gosh. if you fire yeah. if you fire too quickly, your last bullet um, disappears. Another... This is sort of like the reverse of Mega Man where it just won't let you fire. <laughs> yep, this is another important thing to pay attention to when you are playing bootlegs. Are you actually hitting or are your bullets disappearing? There we go. Gambit is now standing underneath the tank. Got to be careful, though. Watch out for these bullets and the explosions and the, the yeah, and the hitbox of the tank itself. And everything. And now the tank is at full health. Uh, I feel really bad for Gambit because this, nah. this boss is just not fun. You know what? Nobody just... Do we deserve bootleg games? I guess everybody deserves bootleg games. Bootleg games are basically a good demonstration of how to do things wrong when you're making a video game. There are some bootlegs that are actually very impressive, and this one actually seems to have done some things right, but other elements like, of it are just really bad. What? So what the things it's done right, like the sprite art? Well, okay, that they stole like that. It, no, nothing in this game. The, the music isn't or isn't theirs. The the engine is awful and beyond saving. The art is all SNKs. Uh, the game concept is SN, SNKs. The syntax did basically nothing themselves. <laughs> ironically, okay. ironically, the most in, the most interesting and impressive game in this series is the one based on 9/11 that we can't show. And only if you took if you took away that part of the game, then it would just be a really good arcade port to the Game Boy Color. But obviously, we're not showing it for clear reasons. A, a, um, a lot of a lot of what people talk about when it comes to bootleg games, especially uh, when tons of stuff is stolen, it still is often a technical achievement to be able to get uh, like. 16 bit mm -hmm. games onto an 8 bit system uh, right. and still make it like quote unquote playable. 
I this don't... is a port from another 8-bit handheld onto an 8-bit handheld with, more, uh, with I think, comparable processing power, and it still runs like crap. Okay, so... It lags constantly. No, this isn't good. I'm not going to defend any part of this. Okay, so this is an example of a bootleg game that doesn't have anything salvageable. Uh, I think so. Th this is just irredeemably bad. I love it. Oh, is the NGPC a 16-bit handheld? I was under the impression it was 8-bit. But, <laughs> but when, when we talk about bits, to be for what it's worth, when we talk about bits, you know, that is like a very marketing term, you know? Like, what is considered, like... The Turbo Graphics is 16 is technically a 16-bit console, but it's not really. It kind of is. It depends it, on what part of the system you're talking about. NGPC, the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission. No, what, which handheld is this? Ne ne Neo Geo Pocket Color. Okay, Neo Geo Pocket Color. That's what the original system was on. Uh, that's what the original system was, SNK's handheld. Okay, let me look at the specs. For Game Boy Color. So earlier someone said, hey, you know, this second, at least this final boss is kind of like the original one, but it has a different background. This isn't the final boss. Chaos is not the final boss yet. There's still another level after this. Okay, so it looks like the Neo Geo Pocket Color had a better uh, CPU, essentially okay. 6.144 megahertz. Uh, whereas the Game Boy Color had up to uh, 4.194 uh, or right. 8.388, depending on the processor mode. I'm not completely sure uh, which. Let's see. RAM Neo Geo Pocket Color had 12 kilobytes. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Come on. Where are the specs? How much RAM? Wow. How much memory did you have? It's crazy as 12 kilobytes would be like an upgrade to some, like, 8-bit home computers. <laughs> I That's love That's pretty it. impressive, yeah. actually, when you consider, like, just how, just how, like, the, the fact that you could get 12 kilobytes of RAM into a tiny little handheld like that uh, in the 90s, when just a decade prior, that was something that was, like, an an expensive upgrade back for your, oh. for your uh, Commodore. Yeah, it actually had up to 64 kilobytes uh, apparently, and the Game Boy Color had half of that, 32. Uh, let's see what other stuff, what other stuff here. Okay, so fair enough. Maybe, maybe the Neo Geo Pocket Color is a, a technically better system that simply, yep. uh, and so, and so this port maybe runs like crap, not just because of syntax, but because the Game Boy Color isn't powerful enough, but I'm a little hesitant to accept that fact because, to be honest, um, like Mega Man Extreme also came from the Game Boy Color, and that game runs very well. Uh, and even Zook Hero, which is based on, uh, by Vast Fame, which is based on uh, Mega Man Extreme's engine, runs really well. And that's also a bootleg, and granted, Vast Fame typically made better games than Syntax, but, you know, point stands. Yeah, honestly, uh, there are a yeah, lot Sean of people who Game Boy Color. have made games for various for various, various handhelds. And uh, yeah. yeah, so there, there's really no reason you can't do something that runs smoothly on the Game Boy Color, unless you're just a pirate. Yarr! Yarr. And making bootleg oh. video games. Oh, Gambit. I, I am feeling really bad for Gambit right about now. This, this boss is just, I knew this was gonna be a wall and I was like, you know, maybe one or two players are gonna get stuck here. And I'm, I really hate that I was right about that. Oh man. But at the same time, Gambit is really getting the hang of this boss uh, at this Absolutely. point. Yeah. I feel like Gambit, one about... or two more attempts is going to get through this. Yeah. I'm just worried about what's going to happen when he reaches the second one. Uh, and at, let's see, where else is where's everyone else? Chaos is at this vertical section. Honestly, uh, you can beat this level in like 30 seconds just by jumping. Uh, you can jump over all these barrels, although Chaos has now identified something I did not, which is that if you shoot the barrels once, uh, they get iframes and they don't <laughs> you damage you. So I guess they... them. I love it. Huh. Neat. I never, you know what? That makes sense. And I never thought to try that. But uh, yeah, that makes perfect sense. They just don't damage you. Cool. You know, it, it's always really cool when uh, various players are able to figure out strats that 
uh, you hadn't figured out yourself while playing oh, yeah. it. And uh, sometimes that. these strats help a lot. And that strat, like, it might even be easier than jumping over the barrels. Oh, yeah, maybe. Like, the, the jumping, jumping in this game you... doesn't seem great. The, the the jumping actually is really nice on this level just because of the angle of the platforms, but it, it does make jumping over barrels kind of tight. Yeah. Uh, here, so... <laughs> the black would you and guess white. That this is, would you guess that this is the final boss or that this even comes from this game? Like, this is not the final boss, by the way. It would looks I... like it might be the final boss, but it's not. Can you tell what the hitbox is? I... I'm not sure. It's that tiny little, uh, it's a little laser diode. So a the, tiny little, the little circle knot. in the middle. Yep. It's also where the attacks come out of. Fortunately, it doesn't have very much health at all. It, it dies really fast. <laughs> there we go. The boss is down. Yeah, that was not the final boss. Shocking. Oh, we're this on space. Final boss. We're in space, everybody. I think. So this is the final boss. This final boss kind of sucks. Um, the strategy that I have for this, and this is actually very similar to the uh, tank in concept. Chaos used the floating uh, shots to get past the uh, bullets there. Very nearly made it. So what you want to do for this boss, in, in my opinion, is take out that machine gun first, and then take out the grenadier, and then take out the drone dropping bombs. But it's really hard to avoid taking damage in this fight because of the spacing between shots and bombs. Yeah, at the very least, you can shoot the machine gun shots. Uh, and if you do that, you uh, then get your uh, next shot back right away. So uh, technically, yeah. I think you could just probably sit where chaos is and keep shooting. As long as you don't accidentally despawn your own shots, you're going to eventually kill the machine gun. Uh, That's what I did, is I actually stood much closer to the machine gun and just mashed on the, sh the fire button. Uh, and when I eventually destroyed it, I lost a bunch of health, but then it was a lot easier. Then I could just jump up and kill the grenadier, which you must shoot from the side. And then I got the bomb thing last. Yeah, I'd say that, like, you know, yeah. the bullets don't really deal a lot of damage. So whatever, tank a few of the bullets. They'll give you iframes against the more deadly things. And then, you know, while you're killing, you know, just go kill the machine gun as quickly as possible because uh, those shots are extremely difficult to dodge. Uh, Chaos is opting to try to go after the UFO first. I'm seeing comments. Oh, I, I was about to say the Neo Geo Metal Slug, uh, Neo Geo Pocket Metal Slug games are really good. Yes. Yes, they are. I, again, I speedrun first mission. I routed the, the the game. I know all of the things about its insides for the most part. I can I can safely say that that if you want to play first or second mission, both exceptional games, uh, considering what they are, um, this is not that. And I, it's just really funny because this just defies all the logic of how those games operate. Yeah. Okay, Gambit. Gambit, as long as you keep doing this strat, you may be able to get through it. Just take it slow. Uh, but not too slow. Just, yeah, Gambit is not getting hit too often in this specific location. Occasionally a bomb comes down and hits, though. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as long as you can kill this main cannon before it kills you, you, uh, there we go. The main cannon is down, and now it's time for the last Very enemy. nice. Oh, come oh on, my Gambit. Gosh. No, Please, you can Gambit. shoot up. You can shoot up. Shoot up. Shoot yeah, up! You have to kill up. the moving thing! Kill deadly oh. bad guy! Yeah. Kill the bad guy. Yeah. Oh. So, yeah, but I don't blame Gambit it. for playing scared, though, because this thing has killed him over and over and over. Shoot up, shoot up. I don't know if he oh. knows that you can... Yeah, delete. Okay, so he just deleted a shot. Maybe he's going to take that and go, yeah, I can delete shots. Yes, yes, yes. This is the strat. You just got to be careful about your placement. Okay, Gambit... Uh, I completely am fine with people stepping away from the boss for a little bit just to, you know, get a tiny bit of a breather so that you can get back into it. Yeah, Gambit wants to beat the boss this time uh, and is not... Oh, yeah. Yeah, honestly, it's so better doing the slow and steady Yep. at this point, for sure. 
And I just say I also really like the background of the final boss with the sort of like the red sun and the sort of blue and teal cloud. Yeah, I love the red sun. It looks a little out of place for this game. It looks too nice. Yeah. It looks very 70s-like. For yeah, some reason, yeah, yeah. it like gives me Elvis vibes, you know, with any of Elvis's songs about Hawaii. I always think of Elvis as like 60s, but I guess he was... Well, 60s and 70s, you know. I guess, I guess so. I, I'm not really familiar with his music. I've seen probably one too many of his films. It's been a long time since I've seen any Elvis films, but... Oh, yeah, they're... Gambit. No, Gambit, no, Gambit. No, oh. no, oh, my heart. Gambit. Everybody, Gambit. my heart just Gambit. got stabbed by Tempestrol. Giving up oh. this game. Temp it's your I'm, birthday. I'm so, and they're suffering I'm so for sorry. you. This is... I was like, this is going to be really funny. And now it's just kind of sad. It's just... Um, no, it's not but sad. I, I can't it's blame great. Him. I can't blame him for this. Because this is like a genuinely a tough boss. And like... The strat for getting rid of it is basically just accept that it is a war of attrition and find ways to minimize your losses. It's really awful. Yeah. I think Gambit's going to get it this time, though. Gambit knows that the end is in sight. Just monotone clearing out the cannon of the tank. Uh, mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. is the second tank fight because, of course, you have to fight the same boss twice. Yep. I love the the little black oh. sprites around the tank, too. It's so good. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, they couldn't get the back. Even, even though it's a background element, they couldn't. Well, yeah, look they at, couldn't fit. Look at the tank on Gambit screen. Like, they did it right there. Yep. How can they couldn't get it right in the warehouse? But because the background color on the, 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 the background color on the background layer is uh, set to one thing. And I guess they they couldn't put like, how do I put this? Oh, yeah. they, they, would, they would have needed bespoke edge sprites for the second tank to make the background look correct. So instead, they just have it filled with the background color. Well, maybe they could have made the warehouse a different color. Hello, they're the ones who made this. Yep. Well, kind of. I mean, only sort they're of. They're the ones who uh, made part of this. It, you know? it, it, they're the ones who the put the polish on, okay? They assembled and the components of a better game. When your polish ends up making the game look worse, then it's not polish. It's like mud. Just mud. They smeared mud. Why are we assuming they wanted this game made well? I don't know. I'm mean, just giving this game a lot more credit than I will. It's, I, I'm of the opinion that there are some things that are just genuinely objectively bad, and this is one of them. Yeah, well, I, I pretty much agree with you. And I try to find redeeming value as much as possible, okay? So I'm going to yeah. criticize the artists in this specific area for being a little sure. bit lazy, because they yeah they could have made another they didn't sprite make the art. It's or just change the background yeah. to the gross, like, uh, desert color, you know? And if you did that, then you would be able to have everything like you wanted. Except for no, the green. No, I mean, it would, it would still have this problem. The green lines would still cut off. I'm pretty sure. Uh, no. <laughs> I could make this work. I could make it work. And chaos is through. We got. There we go. End. Okay, chaos has now beaten the game. I and I told I told all the players once you will know. There's a big screen that says end. I'm pretty sure that is a screenshot from. Uh, might be that actually might be a screenshot of uh, Michael Bay's. Uh, what's, what's the name of the Pearl Harbor? It might be. It might uh, be. So, yeah. Next game. This game's even worse, and I'm so glad that we got somebody to play this. So, this is Metal Slug Vietnam Battle 3, and oh, it is yeah. even worse than the last game. Nah, there's no way. There's no way it's going to be worse. I mean, you're smaller. You're a little guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we've got some new sprites. We've got some new mechanics. It feels like a quote-unquote, like it could have been a better game, but it's not. I so don't the, like the, the falling yeah, the falling is very fast. The bullets, you can only shoot one bullet at a time, but it, in this case, it does it Street Fighter or Mega Man style, where they just prevent you from 
uh, firing again until your bullets have left the screen. If you walk off of a ledge instead of jump off of a ledge, you drop Mega Man 1 style. So you just instantly like fall, you magnet to the ground. Oh no. But after a certain distance of jump falling, you, you do that anyways. So it doesn't matter that much. Uh, you also um, you, you also float in the air when you shoot, but you're <laughs> you, you're put into uh, what is it, I guess effectively hit stop for much longer. The you'll notice that there are actually two upgrades to your gun now, and they do have a meaningful difference, as far as I can tell. Huh. Level one in GI Joe two. Oh, so this comes from another game. Huh. GI Joe two. Ooh. I'm. Here's the deal. GI Joe was just so generic. It is. Okay. I, I never really got into it. Neither did I. I, I think that oh. maybe I had a GI Joe one action figure when I was young because my dad uh, got it for me. But other than that, no. Oh, oh, someone. Ah, uh, one of. Okay, memories. There was a GI Joe movie that came out. Uh, in the late 2000s, I believe, or early... Yeah, 2009, I believe. Okay, uh, and I actually went to that uh, opening night on a date. I fell asleep. I fell asleep during yeah. the movie. It wasn't great. Uh, y you know what? Yeah, I, I like that go movie, on a date but it's not that good. guy again. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that, was, that was pretty much the end. I'm like, sorry, I fell asleep during G.I. Joe, the movie that you brought me to. Oof, that's pretty rough. Nah. Uh, so Chaos died right before a one-up, but that's actually fine because this game also has infinite uh, lives and continues, just like the previous one. Uh, something else so, I want to point out here. Um, so this game has grenades. You throw them by pressing select. This is probably a callback to the fact that in Metal Slug first mission and second mission, you use the option button, which is like the start button, uh, on the Neo Geo Pocket Color to swap uh, between your gun and your grenades. Or bombs, they say. Um, you may notice, especially when you're in in this lower area that sometimes like the sprites and the background will not move in sync with each other and so it'll be kind of confusing as to where objects are which is yeah like kind of was it journey to Silius style doesn't is it journey to Silius that does that i, I want really to three know. frames a second i have no i have no idea uh journey to Silius definitely i don't know i don't know i can't remember I can't recall now. Oh my gosh, Gambit got past the first boss. I don't think Gambit is going to be able to catch up. Very but nice. still, I would feel happy finally beating that stupid, crappy thing. Very nice. Uh, also, to those who are saying that I went to G.I. Joe uh, on a date, let me just tell you that there are plenty of gay people who have terrible taste, okay? <laughs> no, seriously, this one guy... <laughs> Uh, this one gay guy, one of one of my I, husband's I, friends. I wouldn't have expected you to say that. I wasn't. That's not where I was expecting it to go. Yeah, this, this is what I'm saying. Okay, one of my, uh, one of Justin's friends. Okay, decided to that's show funny. us a movie. He's a gay guy. He showed us White Chicks, and I'm like, that is literally the worst movie I've ever seen. And he thought it was the pinnacle of entertainment. And I'm like, oh, oh no. honey, no, this is bad. This is bad. Look, I know that this game that we're seeing on screen, the two different games that we're seeing on screen, are bad, okay? I know when something is bad. At least these are enjoyably bad. Oh, man. <laughs> this is funny. You know, okay, you know what movie I like that nobody else seems to like is Sky High. I don't know what that I, is. I, Sky High is a movie with where Kurt Russell is a superhero. He's not the main character, but Kurt Russell is a superhero uh, father, and I can't remember the actress who plays the mom. And uh, a guy who has only been in B-movies as the main character, and he's a superhero, and he doesn't have any powers, and he goes to a superhero high school, and hijinks ensue. And, like, that sounds like a really... It's, it's, it's campy, and it doesn't take itself super seriously, and people always go, oh, but it's such a bad movie. No, no, no. It is a ser movie that does not take itself seriously, and it knows what it is. It was adequate in a mediocre way. See, that's the thing. I don't agree with that. It, it's not the best movie in the world, but I like it's 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 not trying to compete for for any awards. Like it's not competing with with Spider-Man, right? It's 
it is a it is a fun movie that is making fun of itself constantly, and that's what I love about it. Okay. Okay. Um, good. It's it's not like it's not like so bad it's good or, or bad on purpose. It's just sort of like this low budget rom com, uh, set in a high school with superheroes, that is not trying to to be like the pinnacle of entertainment. And it's just really really funny because Kurt Russell is just being Kurt his Kurt Russelliest the whole time. I, I love mean, it. We all have sort of the guilty things that you know media that we liked that when we found out that everybody pretty much hated it we have to stay silent forever uh i have no guilt in loving this movie well i i have guilt for one movie and it's lady in the water okay. by m night Shyamalan. It, it seems like literally everybody i talked to thought it was the dumbest movie ever and i was like i thought it was good I believe Bruce Campbell was the gym teacher in Sky High. Uh, Sonic Boom. Sonic Boom, right, like gym teacher, man. God, so I, like, my family quotes oh, this movie yeah, fair enough. constantly. <laughs> I have not seen any M. Night Shyamalan movies except for Avatar The Last Airbender, and I went to go <laughs> oh see it. Oh my gosh, that's so bad. I went, that's you know what's so even worse? Is we went to the AMC, and like AMC theaters, you, you just buy a ticket for an admission to a movie, and then you go in and, and watch whatever movie you want. Um, you don't buy a ticket to a specific movie because they're all priced the same. Uh, I, AMC went out of business. I wonder why. Uh, but the, in Canada, at least. But the thing is, so we we were like, oh, there's a theater for Toy Story three, and there's one for Avatar: The Last Airbender, a series we had just finished watching the entire run of, and which we love and have watched multiple times. And we went, well, not knowing anything about either film, I went, well, Toy Story three. I haven't been super impressed with a lot I of like. I think Toy Story three is, is dumb. Okay. A lot of animated sequels. A lot of animated sequels at that time were not really impressing me, and I was like, you know what? I can't. I can't be sure that this is actually going to be a good movie. I was just really skeptical of it, and then I was like, oh, but but Avatar. I love Avatar. I didn't know M Night Shyamalan was the director, and when I saw his it's... name pop up, I went, oh no, oh no, oh no. We're in for a bad time. So I passed up what was a genuinely great film to see the worst adaptation I'm I have sorry, ever seen. I'm sorry, but I would rather watch The Last Airbender than watch Toy Story 3. Okay. Really? Why? Absolutely, because Toy Story 3 is just story t Toy Story 2 2. Like, it's the same story. I don't disagree. And it I is... don't disagree, and it's it's not my favorite. Yeah. I, I think Toy Story 2 is far better. And but The Last Airbender made movie. me laugh so much, okay? Like... If you go in there actually, knowing how absolutely terrible it's going to be and you laugh during it, it's oh. amazing. See, but that, here's the thing, though. I actually don't. Yeah, here's the thing. I, I actually I actually think Toy Story 3 is good, but but I agree. It's it's a largely retread of the second game or the second movie. But I actually I can't I can't enjoy Last Airbender even for how bad it is because it it's such an obvious step on the face of a series which has genuine artistry behind it. Uh, in the oh, name of money, it's making. terrible. It's such it's a trash. It's so inexcusably bad. But in in a way which is not like, oh, this was made by. It's not like an Ed Wood film, right? See, where you go, well, this is made by someone who is incompetent, but but really loves the artistry of making films I and just doesn't understand anything about it, it. If you watch it with it really big Avatar fans, then it's a riot because they get so uh, mad. They get yeah, so, so that, that, angry. That's me. That's me, bro. I, I got mad. With I was I watch it with you at then. the end of that movie. I'm angry now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll have to watch it together sometime just so I can hear your rage. Well, on, on the note of Toy Story 4, I haven't seen it yet, but I, I really should. I just haven't watched a lot of movies lately. Toy Story. Oh, it's time. Yeah, it's time. We're done. Oh, it's, we it's can... Tim. Tim. Everybody, Tim oh. has broken out and declares... The match is over. Oh, th Left well, thank you, room. Kid Cool Music, for popping up. Well, everybody, I'm pretty sure it's clear who took the victory here. Chaos being the only player to make it to the second level. Just Monotone made it to the final boss, taking second. And Gambit, unfortunately, is eliminated. And Crappy didn't even play the game. Stupid Crappy? How could you not play? Oh my gosh, he's so lazy. He he pretends that he's active, but he just wiggles back and forth, seriously. Let me see if Chaos wants to join us in chat. I know you already messaged him. Uh, let me go ahead and drag him in. Hello there, Chaos, and congratulations on your victory today. What? I know, right? 
You were, in fact, the only player to make it to the second game. Yep. Okay. Then. You had a, a very sizable lead. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, turn. talk to me a little bit about this game. What are your thoughts? Uh, I mean, there are Metal Slug games that are worse, and they're <laughs> official instead of uh, knockoffs. Uh, which ones? You know, two. The one that had to be remade because it lagged so bad it was unplayable. Oh, no. You know what? That's actually fair. <laughs> I actually forgot about two. Oh, that's hilarious. I haven't played any of the Metal Slug games, I think. Like, they, they look fun. They're just not really my style of video game. I prefer... I don't know. I mean, same. I, I mean, I, you get health in this Metal Slug. I mean, that's... That's a thing in and of itself. <laughs> oh, that's great. Okay, so not as bad as it could be. Uh, I know that everybody hated that stupid tank. Yeah. Uh, oh, by the way, I'm going to let Gambit know. Uh, BTW, you have to fight the tank a second time. <laughs> Let's see what Gambit says. Yeah. I, I mean, and the second one is worse. The, the first one is, like, easy. And then the second one happens, and it's, oh, no. They're, they're, the safe spots have moved. Oh, really? The <laughs> Gambit's just uh, like, well, I'm glad I didn't get yeah. that far. <laughs> they, they do move slightly, don't they? Yep. Because like, the, the place the, where the uh, drone the, fires down is different. The drone, the drone especially. Yeah. I think it fires, like, slightly more often, which really all it does is move the safe stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad that... Here's the deal. Tempestrol basically said, this is a pile of trash and has no redeemable qualities, but it's better than... Yeah. Better than one of the other Metal Slug games, at least. Uh, so that is good. Honestly, you know, for a bootleg, this seems pretty... It's playable. <sighs> playable. Yeah, it's playable. Yeah. Uh, it definitely has some crap, but at the same time, ways to work around the crap. Yeah, the, the first game, don't press pause. Yeah, yeah so you, you, if you encountered if you the... you uh... your eardrums, don't press pause. Now, what you happens? How? <laughs> I found a, a, a copy of that game that was a clean redump that actually, uh, for whatever reason, it's twice the size and the other code does nothing, except it does fix that bug. At, naturally, I didn't give that out. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, why would I, why would I, the bang fan is the best command on this channel. Why would I give you the one that sounds good? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm curious the... though. Oh, go ahead. Oh, wait. I'm curious to know which which you prefer between the first and second, or I suppose first and third games. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I didn't make it particularly far into the. You made it third exactly game. as far as I did. <laughs> I didn't beat that level. So, well, yeah, there the you go. Are big, which is a thing. So, Chaos, I'm really happy about how you did here, you know, even though you took last on your first match, you took first on this one, uh, yeah. which uh, honestly will help you out quite a bit. You still got to play well during the next matches, of course, uh, but, you know, it's exciting to see you getting a bit of a comeback at this point. So, let me know, is, is there anything that you stream over at your channel that people should be aware of? Uh, I mean, once in a blue moon, a stall happens, or, you know, Silhouette Mirage, the, the run and gun. Oh, that's a good game, at, yeah. But, you know, what apparently made this uh, a thing. I don't know. Well, I'm not blame it on that. That's completely fine. Is there anything that you've been playing offline that you've loved these days? I mean, Yakuza Like a Dragon is good. Oh my nice. gosh. Nice. It's so good. I still need to finish it, though. Like, that's my problem with RPGs. I play them forever, and then I'm like, I keep going back to the casino. Yep. <laughs> no, uh, th that would be why I have never finished Zero. I boot Zero, and then I play Mahjong. Well, Mahjong is so fun. Okay. Anyway, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah, I want to play Seven, but I have to play Zero, Two, Three, Four, Five, Six, Judgment. <laughs> Yeah, no, you don't have I, to play them all in order. Just to, play like a dragon. But it's, but I, judgment, but especially, I need you're good to. Judge. Judgment, you're yeah. especially, you're good to just skip it. True, true. All, all right. right. So we've heard the opinions 
just play Like a Dragon Tempest Troll. That is the overall theme. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I know, I know. It's remember not that like... But like a Dragon is a Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I know it's not quite as connected as the other one, so you can sort of skip ahead to it. But still, I, I don't know. No? Okay, well, I'll play I'll play 0, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 first then. Good to know. Yeah, I'll put it this way. It, 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 for the storyline, there, there, there's YouTubes for that. If, if the right. combat gets bad, because there, there's a couple of them that uh, combat's rough. Yeah, we'll see, <laughs> we'll see both of you, like, next decade after you finish those games, okay? <laughs> Seriously, though, thank you so much, Chaos, and thank you, Tempest Troll. This was a blast to have you on, and I'm glad that you are a huge fan of that last Airbender movie, you know? Not exactly my piece of cake, but I'm glad you liked it. I... I'm going to bring the real pain next match, bro. <laughs> I'll see both of you later. Take care. Put on me. <laughs> All right. Have a good one. Bye. Bye, Chaos. <laughs> oh, and happy birthday. Now the Tempest Troll's gone. <laughs> I'm going to be in so much trouble. Seriously, happy birthday, Tempest Troll. I'm glad you were able to have a lot of fun today. I love having you around. It's always a blast. A uh, big thank you as well to the people who subscribed during the last match. I know that Salak is sent to my sister and Carrific. Subscribe, so thank you, three. Tempest Troll again, happy birthday. We're running a quick ad and we will be right back. What are you excited to attend once vaccinated? See, that is how you give. Okay, this ad rocks because it's pressuring people to go get vaccinated. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Okay, this is like the one Twitch ad that I have been a huge fan of. Happy hour sport parties? Concerts? I don't want to go to any of those. Maybe happy hour. Sure. Wear a mask. The mask of the red death. Wah. Yeah. If you find yourself in an Edgar Allan Poe story, you are probably not going to be very happy. 